The Manhunt After the first phase, after passionate nights and intimate days, only then would he let me trace the frozen river which ran through his face. Only then would he let me explore the blown hinge of his lower jaw and handle and hold the damaged porcelain collarbone and mind and attend the fractured rudder of shoulder blade and finger and thumb the parachute silk of his punctured lung. Only then could I bind the struts and climb the rungs of his broken ribs and feel the hurt of his grazed heart. Skirting along, only then could I picture the scan, the foetus of metal beneath his chest where the bullet had finally come to rest. Then I widened the search, traced the scarring back to its source, to a sweating, unexploded mine buried deep in his mind, around which every nerve in his body had tightened and closed. Then, and only then, did I come close. Hour Love's time's beggar But even a single hour, bright as a dropped coin, makes love rich. We find an hour together, spend it not on flowers or wine, the whole of the summer sky and a grass ditch. For thousands of seconds we kiss, your hair like treasure on the ground, the Midas light turning your limbs to gold. Time slows, for here we are millionaires backhanding the night, so nothing dark will end our shining hour. No jewel Hold a candle to the cuckoo spit Hung from the blade of grass at your ear No chandelier or spotlight See you better lit than here Now Time hates love, wants love poor But love spins gold, gold, gold from straw In Paris with you Don't talk to me of love, I've had an earful, and I get tearful when I've downed a drink or two. I'm one of your talking wounded, I'm a hostage, I'm marooned, but I'm in Paris with you. Yes, I'm angry at the way I've been bamboozled, and resentful at the mess that I've been through. I admit I'm on the rebound, and I don't care where are we bound. I'm in Paris with you. Do you mind if we do not go to the Louvre? If we say sod off to sodding Notre Dame? If we skip the Champs-Élysées and remain here in this sleazy old hotel room, doing this and that to what and whom, learning who you are, learning what I am? Don't talk to me of love. Let's talk of Paris, the little bit of Paris in our view. There's that crack across the ceiling and the hotel walls are peeling, and I'm in Paris with you. Don't talk to me of love. Let's talk of Paris. I'm in Paris with the slightest thing you do. I'm in Paris with your eyes, your mouth. I'm in Paris with all points south. Am I embarrassing you? I'm in Paris with you. Quick draw. I wear the two, the mobile and the landline phones, like guns slung from the pockets on my hips. I'm all alone. You ring, quick draw, your voice a pellet in my ear and hear me groan. You've wounded me. Next time you speak after the tone, I twirl the phone then squeeze the trigger of my tongue wide of the mark. You choose your spot, then blast me through the heart. And this is love, 
high noon, calamity, hard liquor in the old last chance saloon. I show the mobile to the sheriff, in my boot, another one's concealed. You text them both at once, I reel. Down on my knees, I fumble for the phone, read the silver bullets of your kiss. Take this, and this, and this, and this, and this. Ghazals are an old Persian form, and they're written in self-contained couplets with a monorhyme, sometimes one or two or three word repeated phrase like a refrain. And the last couplet is the signature couplet in which the writer has to refer to themselves by name or pseudonym or using some kind of wordplay on their name. Ghazal If I am the grass and you the breeze, blow through me. If I am the rose and you the bird, then woo me. If you are the rhyme and I the refrain, don't hang on my lips. Come, and I'll come too when you cue me. If yours is the iron fist and the velvet glove, when the arrow flies, the heart is pierced, tattoo me. If mine is the venomous tongue, the serpent's tail, charmer, use your charm, weave a spell and subdue me. If I am the laurel leaf in your crown, you are the arms around my bark, arms that never knew me. Oh, would that I were bark, so old and still in leaf, and you, dropping in my shade, due to be due me. What shape should I take to marry your own? Have you hawk to my shadow, moth to my flame, pursue me? If I rise in the east as you die in the west, die for my sake, my love, every night renew me. If, when it ends, we are just good friends, be my friend, muse, lover and guide, Shamseddin to my roomy. Be heaven and earth to me, and I'll be twice the me I am, if only half the world you are to me. Brothers, saddled with you for the afternoon, me and Paul ambled across the threadbare field to the bus stop, talking over Sheffield Wednesday's chances in the cup, while you skipped beside us in your ridiculous tank top, spouting six-year-old views on Rotherham United. Suddenly you froze, said you hadn't any bus fare. I sighed, said you should go and ask Mum, and while you windmilled home I looked at Paul. His smile, like mine, said I was nine and he was ten, and we must stroll the town, doing what grown-ups do. As a bus crested the hill, we chased Olympic gold. Looking back, I saw you spring towards the gate, your hand holding out what must have been a coin. I ran on, unable to close the distance I'd set in motion. Pray song for my mother. You were water to me, deep and bold and fathoming. You were moon's eye to me, pull and grained and mantling. You were sunrise to me, rise and warm and streaming. You were the fish's red gill to me, the flame trees spread to me, the crab's leg, the fried plant in smell, Replenishing, replenishing. Go to your wide futures, you said. Harmonium. The farrand chapelette was gathering dust in the shadowy porch of Marsden Church and was due to be bundled off to the skip or was mine for a song if I wanted it. Sunlight through stained glass, 
which day to day could beatify saints and raise the dead, had aged the harmonium's softwood case and yellowed the fingernails of its keys, and one of its notes had lost its tongue, and holes were worn in both the treadles where the organist's feet in grey woollen socks and leather-soled shoes had pedalled and pedalled. But its hummed harmonic still struck a chord. For a hundred years that organ had stood by the chorister's stalls, where father and son, each in their time, had opened their throats and gilded finches, like high notes, had streamed out. Through his own blue cloud of tobacco smog, with smoker's fingers and dottled thumbs, he comes to help me cart it away, and we carry it flat, laid on its back, and he, being him, can't help but say that the next box I'll shoulder through this nave will bear the freight of his own dead weight, and I, being me, then mouth in reply some shallow or sorry phrase or word, too starved of breath to make itself heard. Sonnet 116 by William Shakespeare Let me not to the marriage of true minds admit impediments. Love is not love which alters when it alteration finds, or bends with the remover to remove. Oh no, it is an ever-fixed mark that looks on tempests and is never shaken. It is the star to every wandering bark whose worth's unknown, although his height be taken. Love's not time's fool, though rosy lips and cheeks within his bending sickle's compass come. Love alters not with his brief hours and weeks, but bears it out even to the edge of doom. If this be error, and upon me proved, I never writ, nor no man ever loved. Sonnet 43 by Elizabeth Barrett Browning How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. I love thee to the depth and breadth and height my soul can reach, when feeling out of sight for the ends of being and ideal grace. I love thee to the level of every day's most quiet need by sun and candlelight. I love thee freely, as men strive for right. I love thee purely, as they turn from praise. I love thee with the passion put to use in my old griefs and with my childhood's faith. I love thee with the love I seem to lose with my lost saints. I love thee with the breath, smiles, tears of all my life, and if God choose, I shall but love thee better after death. To His Coy Mistress by Andrew Marvell Had we but world enough and time, this coyness, lady, were no crime. We would sit down and think which way to walk and pass our long love's day. Thou, by the Indian Ganges' side, shouldst rubies find. I, by the tide of Humber, would complain. I would love you ten years before the flood, and you should, if you please, refuse till the conversion of the Jews. My vegetable love should grow vaster than empires and more slow, an hundred years should go to praise thine eyes and on thy forehead gaze, two hundred to adore each breast, but thirty thousand to the rest, an age at least to every part, and the last age should show your heart, for lady you deserve this state, nor would I love at lower rate. But at my back I always hear time's winged chariot hurrying near, and yonder all before us lie deserts of vast eternity. Thy beauty shall no more be found, nor in thy marble vault shall sound my echoing song. Then worms 
shall try that long preserved virginity, and your quaint honour turn to dust, and into ashes all my lust. The grave's a fine and private place, but none, I think, do there embrace. Now, therefore, while the youthful hue sits on thy skin like morning dew, and while thy willing soul transpires at every pore with instant fires, now let us sport us while we may, and now, like amorous birds of prey, rather at once our time devour than languish in his slow chapped power. Let us roll all our strength and all our sweetness up into one ball, and tear our pleasures with rough strife through the iron gates of life. Thus, though we cannot make our sun stand still, yet we will make him run. The Farmer's Bride by Charlotte Mew Three summers since I chose a maid, too young may be, but more's to do at harvest time than bide and woo. When us was wed, she turned afraid of love and me and all things human. Like the shut of a winter's day, her smile went out, and twasn't a woman, more like a little frightened fay. One night in the fall, she runned away. Out among the sheep her bee, they said, should properly have been a bed, but sure enough she wasn't there, lying awake with her wide brown stare. So over seven acre field and up along across the down we chased her, flying like a hare before our lanterns. To church town, all in a shiver and a scare, we caught her, fetched her home at last, and turned the key upon her fast. She does the work about the house as well as most, but like a mouse. Happy enough to chat and play with birds and rabbits and such as they, so long as men folk keep away. Not near, not near, her eyes beseech when one of us comes within reach. The women say that beasts in stall look round like children at her call. I've hardly heard her speak at all. Shy as a leveret, swift as he, straight and slight as a young larch tree, sweet as the first wild violets she to her wild self. But what to me? The short days shorten and the oaks are brown, the blue smoke rises to the low grey sky. One leaf in the still air falls slowly down. A magpie's spotted feathers lie on the black earth spread white with rime. The berries redden up to Christmas time. What's Christmas time without there be some other in the house than we? She sleeps up in the attic there, alone, poor maid, "'Tis but a stare betwixt us. "'Oh, my God, the down, the soft, young down of her, "'the brown, the brown of her, her eyes, her hair, her hair. "'Sister Maud by Christina Georgina Rossetti "'Who told my mother of my shame?' Who told my father of my dear? Oh, who but Maud, my sister Maud, who lurked to spy and peer? Cold he lies, as cold as stone, with his clotted curls about his face, the comeliest corpse in all the world, and worthy of a queen's embrace. You might have spared his soul, sister, have spared my soul, your own soul too. Though I had not been born at all, he'd never have looked at you. My father may sleep in paradise, my mother at heaven gate, but Sister Maud shall get no sleep, either early or late. My father may wear a golden gown, my mother a crown may win. If my dear and I knocked at heaven gate, 
Perhaps they'd let us in. But Sister Maud, oh Sister Maud, bide you with death and sin. Nettles by Vernon Scannell My son, aged three, fell in the nettle bed. Bed seemed a curious name for those green spears, that regiment of spite behind the shed. It was no place for rest. With sobs and tears, the boy came seeking comfort, and I saw white blisters beaded on his tender skin. We soothed him till his pain was not so raw. At last, he offered us a watery grin. And then I took my hook and honed the blade and went outside and slashed in fury with it till not a nettle in that fierce parade stood upright any more. Next task, I lit a funeral pyre to burn the fallen dead. But in two weeks, the busy sun and rain had called up tall recruits behind the shed. My son would often feel sharp wounds again. Born Yesterday for Sally Amos by Philip Larkin Tightly folded bud, I have wished you something none of the others would. Not the usual stuff about being beautiful or running off a spring of innocence and love. They will all wish you that. And should it prove possible, well, you're a lucky girl. But if it shouldn't, then may you be ordinary. Have, like other women, an average of talents. Not ugly, not good-looking, nothing uncustomary to pull you off your balance. That, unworkable itself, stops all the rest from working. In fact, may you be dull, if that is what a skilled, vigilant, flexible, unemphasised, enthralled catching of happiness is called.